Soledad Flats, Nevada. The time, 6.15 a.m. The climax of arduous planning. Operation A-bomb test underway. Detonation minus two minutes. Military personnel from Buck Private to top ranking brass. Men from research and news services move into position. The bomb carrying plane makes its initial run. Radar with eyes that never sleep. Special equipment go into operation. All orders are carried out with split second precision. Warning is given to all commercial aircraft to stay out of the test area. Detonation minus 70 seconds. Planes take to the air, carrying sensitive instruments and nuclear scientists, ready to record the radioactivity from the closest possible vantage point. Detonation minus 40 seconds. The bomb carrying plane nears the target. Tension mounts as all members of the flight crew anticipate the task to pinpoint the bomb on a tiny circle of Earth below. Now the plane wings its way toward ground zero. Warning signal is sounded. All observers prepare for the blinding flash of the bomb. Detonation minus 20 seconds. Command of the plane is given to the bombardier. Ground zero dead ahead. The key man now goes into action. Bomb bay doors open. Detonation minus 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Two 
from base. Come in, Tar Baby 2. Come in, Tar Baby 2. We've lost contact, sir. Baker 2, sir. Yes, sir. All patrol craft in test area. This is a May Day. Repeat, this is a May Day. Proceed to segment Baker 17. Search for Tar Baby 2. Control from Tar Baby 7. Wreckage sighted southwest corner, Soledad Flats. Ship appears completely demolished. No sign of survivors. Over. Roger, Tar Baby 7. Circle wreckage at 1000 feet until arrival of helicopter rescue unit. Dr. Kruger, Colonel Banks speaking. Would you mind coming into my office right away, please? Thank you. As I was saying, our search planes found the wreckage of your husband's plane, Mrs. Martin. A rescue crew was sent out, but... But they must have reached the wreckage hours ago. Why can't they find him? I honestly don't know, Mrs. Martin. Yes, come in. Thanks. Isn't there any hope? I'm afraid not, Mrs. Martin. They found the pilot dead in the wreckage. And according to all reports, no one could have bailed out. I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Martin. Martin, you're all, are you all right? I... I am, yes. It's Dr. Martin. Call the base hospital. Come on, doctor. Come on. All right, look up to your right. Now look over to your left. All right, get up now. Everything seems all right. Except, can't you recall anything that happened from the time your plane crashed until... I remember the controls froze. The next thing I saw was the main gate of the base. Your plane was completely demolished. The pilot burned to death. And you show up the picture of health. Are you sure you weren't driven here? Positive. You don't remember where you got this? <clears throat> you know, your medical chart shows no indication of any scars on your body. I must have got it in a crash. Uh, now, this was surgery. A very skillful incision. I've never had an operation. Now, that's what I don't understand. Mr. Briggs. Colonel Banks. How are you, Mr. Briggs? Fine, how are you? Fine. I see the FBI doesn't waste much time. Well, uh, not if we can help it, Colonel. Oh, you know our base surgeon, Major Clift? Sure. How have you been, Major? How do you do? Uh, well, I guess you gentlemen have business to discuss. Oh, no, no. This won't take a minute. Sit down. <laughs> Sit down, please, gentlemen. Cigarette. Oh, thank you. I understand you've already talked with Dr. Martin. I just left him. You know, our Colonel, um, According to my files, Dr. Martin is just about the key man on this nuclear project. Yes, along with Dr. Kruger, he is. Mm -hmm. Well, I know they're both good friends and, uh, well, both have knowledge and access to top secret information. 
Well, that's very true, but there's no reason to suspect that oh, they... Oh, we can, uh, we can suspect anything, Colonel. Until Dr. Martin accounts for every minute from the time of the crash. The shock must have caused a mental block. His mind doesn't want to remember the details, the, the origin of the scar on his chest, how he got back to the base under his own power. Did you ever stop to think that perhaps this Dr. Martin isn't really the Dr. Martin? What are you getting at? What I mean is that uh, this man could be an imposter. Mr. Briggs. Any news on the line you were getting on Dr. Martin? Just heard from Washington. Well, I was wrong. This is our man, all right. His prints and description check right down the line. Now, here's what I suggest you do. But you say he's in excellent physical condition, yet you're keeping him in the base hospital. Why? Mrs. Martin, you must realize that your husband is engaged in a highly secret work. If this experience had well, affected his mind. Are you trying to tell me that Doc is... No, no, no. It's nothing serious, Mrs. Martin. His reflexes are excellent. Except for that one lapse of memory, his mind is perfectly clear. Isn't that natural under the circumstances? Yes. Except for the question of the scar on his chest. I know he didn't have it before the crash. Well, I'm sure he didn't, Mrs. Martin. But you see, it would be impossible for a wound of this size to have healed so quickly and without medical attention. But you can't keep him here indefinitely. Well, we don't intend to. Uh, we've asked you to come down here because we've decided to let you take him home, provided you can keep him quiet and he gets enough rest. I understand. Now we'll just have to take that vacation he's been wanting for so long. Vacation? To watch him, you'd think you'd never heard of one. Yes, he must have asked me a hundred times when the next test was scheduled. He's anxious to take his own readings again. Well, he did have a key part in the planning of these projects. Well, is there anything he should or shouldn't be allowed to do? No. Except... he does need diversion. Anything that won't upset or excite him. I see. Movies, bridge, drives, things like that. Well, you're the doctor now. Just see that he gets plenty of rest. Thank you. Goodbye, Colonel. Goodbye. See you later, Major. speaking. Sergeant Bandero. Anything I can do for you, doctor? I wondered if there were any last-minute orders on another atomic test. What do you mean you can't tell me? Sorry, sir. Regulations. I can't give out information to anyone. No, sir. It won't do you any good to come down. All right. We'll see about that. to the base. 
much right away. Alan, don't you agree with me? I've spent months preparing for this series of tests, and no sergeant is going to push me around now. Well, aren't you going to say anything? No. Look, I know they're ready for another test, and I should be there. Can't you understand that they don't want you around for your own good? I don't need their sympathy. There's nothing wrong with me. Then why are you acting this way? You're all on edge. If you don't slow down, I don't know what's going to happen. You really believe that, don't you? Look, Doug, if you won't take it easy for your own sake, please, do it for mine. to get up. Go away. All right, stay in bed all day. It's almost 11 o'clock. What'd you say? Said it was almost 11 o'clock. It is? Mm-hmm. Oh. You go put the coffee on while I get dressed. tell me either. Why? Orders, Doug. Orders? Nonsense. The least that could have been done would have been to let me know. I'm fine. I could have done my work. I hate to say this, Dr. Martin, but in your present state, you're not considered a very good security risk. Me? A security risk? My present state? What's the matter with me? How long am I to be considered? Only temporarily. The results of the test will be available for your study when you return to work. I am ready, Colonel. To us, you're still a very sick man. My advice to you is to go home and relax, as you were ordered. Relax, relax. And if I don't? Then you'll be confined to the base hospital till you change your mind. Now, what's it going to be? Well, Doctor? Oh, Dr. Martin. I didn't expect you back so soon. Haven't you heard? I'm a metal case. Can't even be trusted with my own work. Ah! I'm going to go berserk at any minute. Colonel Banks will fill you in on the details. Ah, uh, don't, don't tell me. Let me see. You're, uh, I know, I know. You're Miss, uh, Vincent, the secretary I share with, uh... Oh, hmm. Doctor, you can't be serious. Uh, there was no one in your office, so I thought you wouldn't mind. Oh, that's all right. It's all right. As far as I'm concerned, you can take the rest of the day off. Are you sure? Mm hmm No, oh, I don't really belong here. I just, uh, just came in to pick up a few personal things from my desk. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye.
He checked out. Yeah, about 20 minutes ago. Okay. Sorry to keep you waiting, Doctor. That's all right. Okay, Doctor. Will you sign out, please? We'll post a couple of men outside of Dr. Kruger's office. Give me Colonel Banks at the officers club. Thank you, Doctor. Good night. Good evening, Dr. Kruger. Yes? My name's Briggs. I'm from the FBI. Briggs. Briggs. Of course. I've heard of you. <laughs> I wonder if you'd mind uh, returning to your office with me. Well, what seems to be the trouble? Oh, just a few things we'd like to straighten out. Concerns me? Well, I'm afraid so, Doctor. And take your own car if you like. I'll meet you there. All right, I will. Papers seem to be intact. Is this all uh, classified information, Doctor? Of course. You know, according to security regulations, that vault should have been locked before you left. But I'm certain I did lock it. All right, then tell me this. Who besides yourself has access to the combination? Well, the Colonel here and Dr. Martin. Dr. Martin. Doctor. He was in the building this afternoon. That's right. We saw him in my office. He left around 4 o'clock on orders. He Dismissed the secretary a few minutes later, but he... he didn't sign out of here until 20 minutes after you left. After I did? Well, there must be some mistake. I personally checked his office just as I was leaving, and he wasn't there. Do you always do that, Doctor? No, but Dr. Martin has been acting... well... quite strange of late. Yes, he certainly has. His wife telephoned to say that he hadn't come home as usual. I was very much concerned about it. So am I. He still hasn't shown up yet. What kind of pipe tobacco do you use, Dr. Kruger? Me? Why, I don't smoke at all. Is you, Colonel? Cigarettes. What are you oh. driving at? That's funny. How long has Dr. Martin been using this brand of tobacco? But I really don't know. Why? Well, now, Mrs. Martin, you say you have no idea where he could be at this hour. Well, I know he's never been this late before without telephoning. 
Well, I hate to ask this, but have you ever had any suspicion that there might be another woman? Certainly not. I'm sorry, Mrs. Morton. Just why are you asking me these questions? Well, let's put it this way. Has he made any new friends lately? You know, people not in the usual group. No, the only people we've seen in months have been connected with the Institute. Excuse me. Hello? Yes, just a moment. It's for you, Mr. Briggs. Oh, thank you. units in Sector 7, Code 4. Repeating, Code 4. Be on the lookout for two-tone coupe. License number 1W67713. Repeating, all units, Code 4. Missing, Dr. Douglas P. as in Paul Martin. Male Caucasian, 32 years of age. Height, 6 foot 3. Weight, 195 pounds. Color of hair, blonde. Color of eyes, blue. Last seen driving a bay. License number 1W67713. Dr. Martin. What are you doing with this? Any special reason for placing it under this rock? Your phone. Over there behind the pump. Operator, give me Crestview 95359. All units in Sector 7, Code 4. Repeating, Code 4. Be on lookout for two tone coupe. License number 1W67713. Operator, are you sure you're dialing the right number? Well, try it again, will you? It's my home. There ought to be someone there now. At junction of Highway 66 and Beach, ambulance en route. Car 17, Code 7, Fourth and Roberts. Suspect may be on. Repeating, Code oh, 2 to all units. Dr. Douglas P. as in Paul Martin, male Caucasian, 32 years of age, height 6 foot 3, weight 195 pounds, color of hair blonde, color of eyes blue, missing. Dr. Douglas P. as in Paul Martin, male Caucasian, repeating, going to the volume. Hey, mister! Operator, give me the police, quick. Central. Hello, Central. This is Briggs. This is Briggs. Come in. Subject, Dr. Douglas Martin, last seen in Route 61, heading toward North Junction. Stopped at gas station, corner of Ridgewood and Mills Road. Acknowledge. Roger. Briggs, out.
He's coming out of it. It's all right, Dr. Martin. You're with friends. You'll be all right. Now, let me go. Let me go. Steady now. Steady, Doc. He'll kill everyone. We've got to stop them. Easy, Doug. Easy. I guess he'll make sense now. I'll get the recorder ready. Can you hear me, Dr. Martin? Yes. Now listen to me. I want you to count backwards from 100. Do you understand? Backwards from 100. 100. 99. now. Dr. Martin, what were you doing with the information you took from Dr. Kruger's vault? I was delivering it. Delivering it? But where? To the rocks in Soledad Flats? Yes. To Soledad Flats. And where we crashed. I was delivering it just as I was ordered. Who ordered you to do this, Dr. Martin? I'll tell you the whole story. I remember we were circling the atomic cloud. So there was an object glowing beneath us at Soledad Flats. We were going down to investigate. Controls jammed. Couldn't pull out. When I regained consciousness, I was on a table. Next thing I knew, they were coming at me. Strange people. Their eyes, uh, those horrible eyes. They didn't speak. I, I could see something strange and eerie pulsating in front of me. Then one of them lowered it toward my chest. It was my own heart. What happened? What is this place? Who are you? What are you doing to me? Can't you speak? Who are you? You are quite well. You have recovered from your unfortunate accident. Who are you? A scientist, like yourself. Where do you come from? From a planet, yet unknown to you. You know my name. You speak English. We speak every language. You can't expect me to believe that. I'm getting out of here. Stay where you are. Who are you? 
I have already told you that. How did you get here? Here. In our machines magnetically propelled across the electron bridge we have created. Electron bridge? You mean you come and go, just like that? Without anyone ever seeing you? Our ships have been sighted on numerous occasions by your people. Then why haven't we been able to track one down? We have a warning system similar to your primitive radar. Our machines are set to change course at the mere approach of a pursuing object. Let's say I do believe you. Where are we right now? In a cavern within the upper crust of the Earth. How long have you been here? Since the beginning of your experiments in nuclear fission. What have you got to do with that? We are accumulating the energy released with each of your atomic explosions. One moment. No, I hear it. Who is it? No, we don't hear it. I love it. No, I need no. Yeah, you know. Never seen no. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, see no. Yeah, I've been no. I was needed it. What was that? A report from the monitor we sent to the surface to obtain the results of your last nuclear test. Results? They'll take days to analyze and compute. I think you will find these figures are correct. I can't believe it. Where is that man? You don't recognize the area? No. He is in the vicinity where you crashed. That rock was glowing. A normal reaction in view of the amount of radiation absorbed. You have a remarkable memory, Doctor, considering the fact that you did not survive the crash. What do you mean? The mechanism of your heart had ceased to function. It was necessary for us to revive it. You were dead. I was dead? That's what they were doing. You didn't even try to help the pilot. Why did you save me? Because we had an important need of your services. Such as? Look this way, Doctor. You will understand. Here, Doctor. You are the first of your world to be looking at our solar system, the Astron. This is our planet, Astron Delta. It occupies the fourth position in relation to this, our Sun. Yes, go on. During the 23rd time rotation, our Sun began to die. So, during the succeeding generations, as our planet began to cool, vegetation began to disappear. Our eyes developed to this state to combat the ever-growing darkness. We were forced to migrate. You left your planet? Where? We invaded these neighboring planets. They were nearer to our sun. How many of them? All of us. Well over one billion. There were feeble attempts to stop us, but we were prepared for such contingencies. 
And now that our sun is about to completely expire, we must move again in order to survive. Yours is the only planet in this solar system capable of supporting our civilization. This is fantastic. Over a billion of you trying to come here to Earth. We have no alternative. We have been putting our plan to work for some time. At the proper moment, the invasion will be launched from our platforms, which are being readied in space. Nothing can stop us. Insane. This is ridiculous. You cannot find your way in or out of this cavern. Do not try to leave.
You have discovered our menagerie. Don't you think you will be more at ease on this side of the cage? It's horrible. What are you doing here? We are breeding our, shall I say, armies. Those carnivorous insects and animals. What have you done to them? Their growth is due to a change in their genes. With your next nuclear test, these animals will multiply at a rate beyond imagination. When the time comes, we will unleash them. They will spread to every continent and devour every living thing on the surface of the Earth. What good will that do you? How could you expect to survive better than we? We have provided for that. No, Doctor. Look over there. We will use their bodies to fertilize the soil. Vegetation will rise up in abundance. A new era of civilization will begin. Gamma rays? You see, Doctor, we have arranged for everything. Wait a minute. All this equipment? Our nuclear storage units. To date, we have accumulated several billion electron volts as a result of your atomic explosions. Several billion? I have... A chain reaction at this point could release enough unstable isotopes to, to create a new and powerful element. Might be impossible to control. True. An element that will never be known by your scientists. I can assure you the strength of this new element will well, be... This is a powder keg. Could go off at any minute. I assure you, Doctor, we have everything under our complete control. What force could possibly be strong enough to harness the... You control your whole operation by electricity. Of course, no generators, no generators. That means you're getting your power from somewhere on the surface. It must be passing through here. You have heard enough, Dr. Martin. Step inside. All right. What do you want from me? You will have access to advanced information relative to the time and strength of the forthcoming atomic tests. What about it? He will provide us with that information as soon as it is available. I see. You're afraid of an overload. You can't tap enough electricity wherever you get it from to control a strong enough charge. You are a clever man, Doctor. Perhaps too clever. And what makes you think I'll give you any information? It is the only way you can save your own life when the time comes. You will be transported to one of our platforms in space and resettled here when our operation is completed. You're asking me to sabotage the entire world, three billion people. They are doomed in any case. Well, I guess there's no alternative. I'll have to do as you say. You are lying, Doctor. Your only wish is to betray us. No. I know. Your thoughts have been recorded. Lie detector? Call it what you like. You force me to resort to other methods. I will contact our space station. You are an unwilling subject, Dr. Martin. What? Who are you? I am Vitala. You will listen and obey. No, I... You will listen to my orders and obey me. You will listen and obey. Listen and obey. You will remember nothing you have... 
either see or heard here, nothing but my orders which you will obey. Yes. You will obtain the data and bring it to the stone near the place where your plane was wrecked. To the stone. What have you seen or heard here? What have you seen or heard here? Nothing. Repeat my orders. I will obtain the data and bring it to the stone. Well, that's what I did. I took the information to where they told me. I didn't realize I was being mesmerized. Why doesn't somebody say something? Don't you believe me? Kurt, you understand. These giant animals breeding by the millions, they'll devour everything unless we stop them. Of course, Doug, we will. Colonel. Colonel, you've got to arrange to set off another bomb tonight. The strongest charge we have. They're beneath the ground with all their equipment. We can blow them to pieces. Now, wait a minute. A strong charge will overload their units. You don't believe me, Colonel? We do easy, Doug, easy. You think I'm crazy, all of you. Well, I'm not, do you understand? Everything I said is true. I saw it with my own eyes. Give me a hand, Doug. Now, let me go. Let me go. Steady, steady, steady. Take it easy now. Take it easy. We'll talk this whole thing over. What are you doing to me now? And just rest quietly. That's it. Martin should be along any minute now. She went for their car. What'll I tell her? Well, he's in a state of shock. Tell her he's resting quietly. Hey, excuse me, I think I'd better wait for her at the information desk. Well, Dr. Martin seems to be indestructible, except for those hallucinations. Those weren't hallucinations, Colonel. Under the influence of sodium amytol, a patient loses all control of his imagination. Well, then he shouldn't be able to fabricate those stories. That's right. Major, you're not trying to tell us that everything he said was true. Look, gentlemen, I can only give you the medical facts. As for the rest, you'll have to decide for yourself. Excuse me, please. Dr. Kruger. Chilly, isn't it? Oh, Mr. Briggs, you startled me. I didn't expect to see anyone here. Well, uh, neither did I, Doctor. Well, I suppose you want me to explain why I'm here. Mm-hmm. I want to believe, Doug. We've worked together a long time. Anyway, I just had to come out here and check for myself. Check what, Doctor? For an entrance or an exit to the caverns he described. I'm afraid you're wasting your time. Have a cigarette, Doctor? No, thank you. See, we've already covered the entire area. We couldn't find a thing. Then, what about that scar? I'd like to see you disprove that. Oh, Mrs. Martin. Oh. How is he, Doctor? Oh, he's resting fine. I think he'll be all right. How's the car?
away from me. Keep away, I say. Stop. Let me go. They're after me. Nobody's after you, Dr. Martin. Keep away. Look, he's trying to help you. I don't need the help. I want to see Kurt right away. Now, you control yourself. And I'll call him just as soon as you get back to your room. Now, you get back into bed and I'll call Dr. Kruger. Uh, I've got to figure something out before he gets here. I need a pencil, some paper, and a slide rule. I'll see that you get it. Oh, can I have Dr. Kruger, please? Dr. Kruger speaking. Oh, yes, Major. How is he? All right, I'll be over in a few minutes. Doug. Doug. soon as I could. Is there anything wrong? He's much better. I imagine he's even started working. He asked for paper and a slide rule. That's interesting. Wonder what he's up to. Formulas, equations. Anyway, whatever he says, pretend to agree with him. Major Cliff's orders. Of course. Doug. Yeah. Doug Kurtz here. Hello, Doug. In just a second, I'm almost finished. I'll take your hat. Thank you. Kurt, let's face it. I know that you all think there's something wrong with me. No, of course not. No, I, I wouldn't blame you after the story I told last night. Well, frankly, you did have us a little worried asking that a bomb be dropped because of what you said. You don't believe me either. Kurt, I tell you, I've been there. I've seen what they're doing, breeding animals into carnivorous monsters. But I don't need a bomb to stop them. I figured it out. It's all here. Now, look. Here's the nuclear strength of our last test. And this is the amount of electricity needed to control it. Let me see that. I had to estimate the conversion rates of their transformers. These figures are correct. Such transformers must operate on a constant supply of electricity. Where could they get that much electric power? Only one way. They must tap it from the main lines at the powerhouse. Could do it by parallel induction. Nobody would ever know the difference. All we have to do is to cut it off. Cut off the power? We can't do that. It would cause untold damage for miles around. Such a power stoppage must be planned in advance. Eight to ten seconds, that's all I need. That gap in supply will short out their resistors and the whole thing will go up. But you won't go along with that. No, no, not Doug, get back in bed. Car keys there. Now look, you're carrying this out of our way. Doug! Please call the main gate and try to stop Dr. Martin. Doug took the car. Hurry. Dr. Martin. Stop. Stop. He did what? How long ago? Right, we'll leave immediately. What's wrong, Colonel? Dr. Martin. He's on his way to the powerhouse, wants to cut off the power supply. Well, let's go. I couldn't stop him, Doctor. He went that way.
Turn the power off for a hundred miles. Do as I say. Here it is. Stay where you are. Put down that gun, Dr. Martin. I'm warning you, Colonel. Come any closer and I'll kill you. Now the next one. What's this one? That's the master switch. Cut it. Doug, please, don't. I said cut it. Get back or I'll kill him. Go on, get back. Go on, get back. Do as he says. Give me ten seconds after I cut the power. If I'm insane, nothing will happen and you can do what you want with me. But if I'm right... 
now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Over here. Flats right in the button. Just as he said. He blew them to pieces. <laughs> 